Thank you very much. Uh, and hello, everyone. Manish from Meta Connectivity, uh, formerly known as Facebook, Facebook Connectivity. Uh, we recently changed our name. And pleasure to be here. Uh, I usually get asked, what is Meta Facebook doing in RAN and Open RAN? So let me just start by addressing that right at the outset. Uh, uh, clearly, uh, you know, Facebook is not an operator, not a vendor. Uh, our interest in, in Open RAN comes from the fact that we do want to bring more people online to a faster internet. That's, uh, that's our mission, and we want to do that globally. And uh, as part of the, our efforts there, we want to get that internet, including mobile internet, more affordable, more abundant across the globe. Uh, and in that realm, uh, RAN becomes an important uh, area to solve for, to again, expand the availability of mobile internet uh, in different parts of the world. Uh, that has led us to really support incubating the ecosystem. And the reason ecosystem has been we ourselves are not developing the technology uh, in, in the RAN, uh, you know, as the typical vendor would, but rather we are more uh, spending our energies in developing the ecosystem for open RAN. But let's uh, start with why. And he here is, uh, if we look at the RAN market today, uh, the realities are there's been a lot of uh, consolidation that has happened in the, the, the RAN market, leading to a very limited number of suppliers. And if you're looking at a mobile operator, the way they would be sourcing the equipment is sourcing the entire solution from a single vendor, very tightly integrated, very monolithic. And what that has led to is slowing down of the innovation on the radio access network itself and we are not seeing the economics of the ran improve uh, at a faster rate and that really then brings us to open ran as uh, uh, balaji talked earlier a movement an industry movement that is really focused on disaggregating the ran disaggregating it on two key vectors first hardware software disaggregation and I, that's key to really leverage merchant silicon costs platforms uh, even i would argue to the extent bring the economies of cloud onto the radio access network uh, and then the second one is really open uh, opening interfaces across key functions uh, and that's really important again to drive that you know diversity in the supply chain build a more sustainable uh, supply chain drive more uh, innovation on the ran and then of course improve the network economics so what is open ran and i mean in a, in a, in a simply uh, nutshell if i talk about its disaggregation leveraging open interfaces, uh, the architecture and interface specification work around this is happening a lot in ORAN Alliance, uh, where again, from Meta, from Facebook, uh, we are also members and we are supporting that effort. Uh, and if you really look at, at, at a high level, three key functions, I would start as one, two, three, RU, DU, CU. This is where the basic disaggregation happens with your RU as a radio unit sitting at the top of the tower, providing all the digital front end, RF front end, the lower phi capabilities in there with, with your RF front end. And then you have your DU, which is a distributed unit. Now that could be sitting at the bottom of a tower or it could be sitting on an edge. Uh, and the DU then provides a lot of the layer two functions. Think of your, your max schedulers and uh, RLC and more. Uh, and then you go into C, which is a centralized unit, and that would typically be hosted on a cloud or some centralized location. Uh, and this is where a lot of your layer three functions, the radio resource controls or radio resource management, PDCP, et cetera, would be consolidated. And that basically provides the basic disaggregation of open run across RUDUC. But then the arc, new open run architecture takes it one step further and introduces new uh, logical function called RIC, a RAN intelligent controller. And that's where things start to get interesting because now RIC starts to provide you the ability to apply new AI and machine learning uh, frameworks onto the RAN, which historically uh, were pretty closed implementations and only a handful of uh, uh, players could uh, drive that kind of innovation. Now, RIC itself comes in different flavors. Uh, uh, 
there's near real time rig, non real time rig. And if you really uh, simplify that, that's basically time and granularity in terms of how quickly the decisions have to be closed. If you're talking uh, sub second, it's near real time, uh, as the name suggests. And if you're talking about decisions of the order of minutes, days, maybe even, then you're taking those more into uh, non real time. But the bigger point being, these platforms then have open interfaces to the RAM. And northbound, you can bring in different applications, XAPs and RFs, that's what they are called, but think of it as basic applications that anybody can start to innovate and bring their applications. So you could do better handovers, you could do better coverage solutions, you could do better beam forming, on and on and on. And now it's not, you're not dependent on just when render to drive that innovation, but you start to create that ecosystem that starts to accelerate the innovation. So, uh, as far from a meta, meta connectivity perspective, uh, we, we help create TIP Telecom Infra project. And as part of that, within the Telecom Infra project is the Open RAN project group, which is very much focused on driving uh, this effort. Now, work in TIP, just for clarity, is not on specification on architecture. TIP has a liaison agreement with ORAN Alliance. All the architecture and interface spec works happen in ORAN. But I always say, it takes more than a spec to translate it into reality. And I think some of it the previous speaker was also talking about, and that's where TIPS efforts are focused on, really productization of open RAN with open interfaces. And so the work uh, is structured across four components of groups, RU, DUCU, uh, RIA, RAN intelligence and automation. That's where a lot of the AIML work is happening. And then you have the ROMA, which is a lot of RAN orchestration and lifecycle management work is happening. A lot of these component subgroups are developing requirements. So they do leverage the interface spec, but it takes more than a spec to, to really build a, the, the true products in a disaggregated way with a multi-vendor ecosystem. And that's the work that goes on uh, in these subgroups. And all of these are led by operators. And then there are two segments, you know, outdoor and indoor. And those segments of groups are pretty much focused on then driving integration, develop blueprints that are fully verified into community labs, and then make these disaggregated multi-vendor solutions easy for the operators to consume. Here's an example of how this whole work gets done. If you look at the top of the chart, you see from idea to define, build, test, release, deploy. That's the broad tip framework. We start, everything gets started with the operator partners. Uh, in the idea phase to identify the right use cases, then goes into define where the requirements are developed. And here's a good example. Currently, TIP is uh, working with the five European operators, uh, also referred as the uh, OMG, the MOU group, the Open RAN MOU group. Uh, this includes Deutsche Telekom, Telefonica, Vodafone, TIM. Uh, and these operators have come together and have shared common requirements. And these requirements cut across Cloud Infra, DUCU, RU, front hall requirements, RAN features, and then there are requirements around RIC and XAPS as well, as well as orchestration. And TIP is taking these requirements, working with the ecosystem partners, and then translating them into three different releases that will come over time, but then take all these requirements and translate them into real products, real solutions that are open, multi-vendor, and disaggregated. And I'm really pleased to share with you the progress. There's been a tremendous amount of progress. If you go to TIP Marketplace, which is TIP Exchange, there are now 42 products listed out there, and these have been batched and ribbon. Uh, and they're coming from different suppliers. Uh, the project group work also is expanding. So new operator partners, including Airtel and Orange, now they're taking uh, you know, more leadership role in TIP uh, to drive these uh, requirements to uh, productization efforts and there are 35 uh, different trials across uh, different countries and different operator partners and anyone who's interested in more details i would point you to go look at the tip blog that was published earlier this year and we uh, earlier this week and uh, just earlier this week tip and sites released the blog and it has a lot more details of who the ecosystem players are and what they're doing now as part of this journey uh, from a meta standpoint, we also found that there are a number of barriers that need to be knocked. And that led us to create a program called EvenStar. And EvenStar is a program that is really focused on productization of the RU and drive that productization of open RAN through partnerships and innovation. Uh, this is 
the 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 key barriers if i may number one first thing that led to the creation of even star program was we found that the macro radio units availability was really really limited and then how do we tackle massive mimo complexities uh, of course uh, you know there are issues around if you disaggregate how do you drive more interoperability etc and then overall lowering the tco so there are four key tracks of even star program the first one is the radio unit track which is really looking at the development of the macro rus multi different band combinations and there are already uh, early operators uh, that are working with even star rus and are actually taking them into trials and deployments you can find out more vodafone has publicly announced that the deployment that they are going to be doing in uk uh, with even star and, and more the second one is interoperability uh, this is a track which is very much focused on, uh, as I said, uh, driving interoperability and certification across RUNT. The third track, Massive MIMO. This is a very, very important track because for Open RAN to really be successful and be deployed at scale, obviously, uh, Open RAN needs to support Massive MIMO, and that's a key pillar of even Start program, really working on uh, developing the massive MIMO solutions with partners, and then also driving uh, integration, test and measurement efforts. And, and, and there's a number of work going on around in the labs that uh, that uh, even start program is building. And then last but not the least, silicon. And that's an important pillar because finally, when it comes down to innovation and cost economics improvement, that starts with silicon. And so there's been efforts uh, that the even start program has been putting in to again, accelerate that silicon ecosystem, stimulate that, and bring more innovative solutions on the, right to the silicon level to support that. I won't get too much into the details at a high level. The RU track has multiple bands. There's obviously going to be solutions coming. A lot of these today are FPGA based. Uh, going forward, they're going to be SOC based again to improve that cost economics. And similarly, there is a massive MIMO track, which is currently looking at 32 TR. Going forward, 64 TR solutions. And then on the silicon track itself, a couple of silicon partnerships have been announced by the Evenstar program, including Max Linear, Marvel, and others. And there are more announcements that will be coming coming out as those partnerships uh, mature. Uh, so it's a growing ecosystem. Multiple operator partners are supporting Evenstar, but Evenstar is very focused on building these RU units and, of course, working with silicon partners to drive innovation at the silicon level. So I hope I did good on time. And on that note, I will I thank all of you for the opportunity. I will pass it back to the host. Thank you. Thanks very much. And uh, thank you for getting us back. Yeah, round of applause, please, for the speaker. We actually, yeah, we can take a question or two if anyone has something. Sujit? Manish, hi, thanks. This is Sujit. Hey, Sujit. Um, so, what is your opinion? So, when I, um, uh, visited with the last live event, uh, TIP live event in Amsterdam. One thing that I came back with is the impression that why is United States so much lacking in participation? Uh, you know, in terms of operators, well, there was Parallel Wireless, there were, you know, other innovative companies, but uh, that was a sort of a sense I came back with that the Europeans, you know, Asia Pacific, China, of course, Latin America, everyone is in it. What's going on, you think, with uh, United States. Yeah, so I think different, uh, I'll say this, and I'll, I'll share this from a TIP Open RAN perspective. So there are operator partners uh, in TIP who are working, and I mean North American operator partners who are working in TIP on a number of use cases. Just to give you an example, so DISH, for example, they are a partner in TIP Open RAN. They've been working on the RU uh, subgroup sharing the requirements of the RU, as well as that uh, they've brought in the requirements for the TUCU side uh, as well. Similarly, there are uh, other operator partners, uh, including tier one uh, operator partner, uh, who has brought in a number of use cases actually on the RIC and XAP side. So, uh, so, so, so there is that. Uh, but I will also say this uh, to your point: there is opportunity to do more. I mean, there's definitely. I just shared with you uh, the the Open RAN MOU group, the five tier ones from Europe, who have actually brought common requirements, and 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 uh, I think they brought that into TIP into Telecom Infra project again to translate those requirements into into product solutions. And uh, I do think there's opportunity here.
clear for uh, for the uh, North American operator partners also to 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 do more and help accelerate uh, this uh, this whole disaggregation of what uh, so yeah.